Hey developers, so how important is a web development portfolio for your career and job opportunities? Should you be creating a web development portfolio? Should you be putting the time and effort into it? Let's talk about it. So right now I know there has been an explosion of developers and people trying to get into this web development industry. People from all across the world are going to amazing sites free, like Free Code Camp. they're going on YouTube and they're learning web development and they wanna get into programming. And one very common suggestion I see over and over again is that you should spend time and create an amazing portfolio. That somehow a portfolio will land you this amazing job because you'll show all the skills off to your employer and it's a must have. Well, I'm telling you right now that you've been lied to. Okay, so I know that's probably a shock to many of you. It's pretty common advice. Everyone tells you to create a portfolio. But I'm gonna tell you why it may not be the best thing you should do when you're first starting out. So let's go ahead and deep dive into it. But first, I have a quick word from my sponsor. Do you guys wanna win some really cool prizes during this holiday season? Well, I bet you do. From our friends from .tech Domains, they created this really cool app. It's called Break the Code. It's 100% free. This is absolutely free. And it's basically a quiz game, a set of challenges. And if you win, you can win a whole bunch of really cool things. The grand prize is a $5,000 gaming rig, but you can win $100 Amazon vouchers, PlayStation 5s, iPads, MacBook Pros. It's pretty cool. I actually went through a few of the questions and they are really cool, like technical questions. They're actually great for developers or if you're looking to be a developer. So check this out, it's Break the Code. I'll put a link in the description. Make sure you click on that link. I'll also put it in the comments. So check it out, Break the Code. It's a really cool, fun game. It's 100% free, and it's just a way for .tech domains to give back to the community. So I thought this was really cool. So okay. yeah, check it out. So let's talk about portfolios. Now, portfolios are a set of sites that you design and create that showcase your skills that you want to show to employers to get that next job. So what typically most people do is they'll spend a week or two or three and they'll Google a bunch of sites, they'll look at a bunch of ways other people have put portfolios together, they'll put a few sites together, they may create a personal site, and then they'll list that on their resume. But you know, what I've seen in this industry and what I've seen in doing hiring for a couple different places is that really for most places, you're wasting your time. Now, I will give you a caveat that if you are going for purely design a position where they're gonna be looking at everything that you've created in the last 10 years and to look how you put together different designs, this is a different answer. So of course, if you're going to for design position that you probably need to show your designs, but most front end positions, that's not really necessary. So the fact of the matter is, is that there is thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of people trying to get into this industry right now. And it is very, very competitive. So it's to the point that most jobs that list junior dev or one year of experience required are getting hundreds, if not thousands of applications for every job position. So there is absolutely no way that your amazing portfolio site that you created will ever be seen by the HR manager or anyone in that organization. It's really a supply and demand thing. It's really a logistics problem because there's just not enough people to go through every single resume a lot of these positions have. And they don't have enough time to look at your GitHub, to look at the portfolio projects, to go to your website. It's just not gonna happen. And not to mention that looking at someone's portfolio and their GitHub projects is not really a good indication of how good of a developer they are. At most, it may show employers that you understand how to use GitHub and that you may understand how to use version control, but the actual repository in GitHub could be completely copied from somewhere else. In fact, a lot of people's GitHub repositories have code going back for years and that code could be forked from other places. It could be not a good representation of where you are today and what your skills are now. And people who have taken those that code and put them up on portfolio sites or personal blogs, that's not really a great indication either of how good a developer you are because there's so many resources out there. You could have easily taken a website from somewhere else, copied the code and called it your own. And let's not even mention that if you're looking for more of a backend position, creating a portfolio makes even less sense because you don't even get the aspect of having a nice visual site that you can show that you've created. And backend code is, uh, you know, just code really. I mean, people aren't gonna to be able to run them and to use them. Well, they could use them and run them, 
But once again, there's really no time for hiring managers to take a look at your code, compile it and test it out. It's never gonna happen. And it's really hard to put that code up on a website somewhere and then show that it does something in the background. So in most cases, once again, it's not gonna help. And let's face it, I've actually done a lot of interviews with intermediate to advanced developers and very few of them in my experience actually have uh, more than just a personal blog. You know, many of them don't have any kind of portfolio and some of them for good reason too. For example, you may have a person that came from a company where all their code was internal and it wasn't public facing. So obviously they don't have a public portfolio to show everyone. So I would never hold back a job from someone just because they didn't have a portfolio. I don't think that makes sense at all. So that really begs the question, if you're a new web developer or you're looking for someone to change jobs, are you looking to change jobs? What well, you should focus on. So I think at this point, there's a couple of different levels, but I'm gonna give you the idea. I'm gonna go and talk about what happens if you're trying to get into the door of a company and you want to get on their radar. So you're much better off instead of spending, you know, hundreds of hours creating portfolio sites or dozens of hours is to really focus on the interview and first and foremost, try to figure out something that could set you apart. So one great way to do that is to do networking. So network with everybody in your local area. Obviously, because of what's happening right now, it's hard to go to local meetups, but as soon as those start up, you wanna to go to the local meetups, talk to people that are working at different employers and see if you can get an in that way. So really the goal is what you're trying to do is to uh, get in the door somewhere. So you don't have to be in that huge backlog of hundreds of resumes or dozens of resumes these companies get. And also I would say that online meetups are happening all the time. Maybe your local meetup has actually gone online. It may not be a bad idea to start going to those online meetups, asking questions and trying to network that. Also, don't forget about social media. I've seen some very junior developers on Twitter who are very active, who have been able to grow a smaller, but you know, a fairly good personal brand on Twitter, and they have been able to leverage that and getting jobs. Sometimes it's as simple as just putting on your social media that you're looking for a job, having people retweet that. Um, that is one way of kind of getting more people to know that you're looking and to help you out. Also, don't forget about your personal network. So your friends, family, grandpa, uncles, aunts, let everyone you know that you're looking for a job if they know of anything because having a personal connection to a job will be much easier to get than just randomly uh, throwing a, a resume somewhere. Also have a really good resume and don't forget about a cover letter. So explain in the cover letter exactly what you're looking for. Make sure you reference the job you're applying for and put some time and effort into it. You know, when I'm looking at resumes, sometimes the difference between resume A and resume B might be a cover letter and that person's tone and how eager they are to learn. Also, if all else fails, I've seen this work sometimes, people just put out hundreds of resumes out. So there's no shame in putting dozens, if not hundreds of resumes out if you are brand new to the industry and you're just trying to get your foot in. So that could be just a numbers game. Eventually someone will pick up what you're putting out there. Someone will give you a shot. Someone will get you an interview. But I would definitely exhaust, try not to, I would definitely try to talk to LinkedIn and many other places, social media first. Uh, speaking of LinkedIn, that is also a great way to get your name out there. You can, there's a lot of ways to improve your LinkedIn profile, which could get you more clicks. You can also connect to recruiters. So there's definitely a network that's happening on LinkedIn. You can also be proactive on LinkedIn and go to the jobs. You can find the people that work at the jobs you wanna work for and try to connect with them and talk to them and mention that you're looking for a job. So I think all those would be way better for you to work on than a portfolio site. Now, I understand there is some positives with a portfolio site. It does get you in the habit of creating work and creating websites, but you should be doing that anyways on your free time while you're looking for a job. So after you do all this and you get into the door, really, even at that point, I don't see many employers really looking at your portfolio or your GitHub very close. Once again, they wanna know who you are because it's very difficult to look at some websites you created or your code that you write and find figure out how good of a coder you are because those are so easily faked and you know it's really hard to really establish who you are. So at this point you may want to actually focus on interviewing skills. So that could be everything from anything from uh, working on your soft skills, how you answer questions, how enthusiastic you are at the interview, practicing good uh, questions and be able to answer their questions for any kind of trivia type questions you get. And don't forget one really important 
common way that people assess developers by take home projects. If you put a lot of effort into your take home project, you know, make it responsive, make sure you add tests, make sure it's accessible. That will go a long way for you getting that job. So the first step is always to get inside that door by whatever means you can so you can actually get the on-site interview. And the next thing to do is to wow them during the interview. So those are my steps on how to nail uh, your interview. But really, I'll recap it once again. Don't bother creating a portfolio site. Maybe if you're a designer, do. But just focus on you know leveling up your skills. Make sure you network. Try to get in that door on that interview and then wow them during the interview. If you disagree with me and you think that I'm wrong, leave a a comment below, let me know why I'm wrong. And also make sure you check out Dot Tech Domains. That's my sponsor for this video. They were awesome and they have those free prizes. So check that out. I appreciate it. Thanks.